What's going on? Welcome back to Real World Tool Reviews. Uh, I've been wanting to do a comparison of my two main meters that I've used for the last few years uh, for working on air conditioners, heating and air conditioners. Um, and I wanted to mainly talk about why I like this fluke one so much better than I like this field piece. Uh, the field piece is good. It is a little cheaper than the flute. They make expensive field pieces. This is one of the cheapest ones, but uh, this was a good meter for me. It still is. It's it's a good, uh, you know, it's good for checking to make sure you got power and make sure the power's off. There's nothing wrong with it for that. Uh, where I ran into trouble with it was testing capacitors and some other stuff like uh, ohms and stuff. It just does not respond as quickly or as matter-of-factly as this fluke one does. I just, I love this fluke because it is just so much more reliable. And I'm going to try and do a little bit of a demonstration on this capacitor. Now, I use these for testing capacitors very frequently and uh, the main reason that I got this Fluke 116 multimeter is because I was getting fed up with the field piece. This is the field piece SC260 and uh, it was just pissing me off when it came to testing capacitors. It just, it was jumping around a lot on me. And I'm going to see if I can get them to do what they often do that makes me mad. <laughs> and uh, maybe it will help somebody. <laughs> you know, if, if you're using uh, multimeters to test stuff, I would recommend this fluke way before I would recommend the field piece. Uh, so I'm going to test this capacitor. This is a... 30 plus 5. So from the common to the herm, we should be getting 30 microfarads. And from the common to the fan, we should be getting 5. So I'm going to turn it to microfarads. And you can see that screen. Good. Okay. So we're going to go common to herm. You see how fast and non glitchy. That went 31.2, so that this is good. Uh, this is a new capacitor, so should be good. Then we're going to go common to fan, 5.22, so we're good. And the numbers don't jump around. Everything is right on the money. It never changes. It's just perfect. I mean, it just tells you exactly what you want it to tell you. Now, I'm going to see how this stupid field piece does. I have a feeling that uh, it's gonna probably wanna act right now that it's on camera. Uh, but this kind, I think the reason that it jumps around and is annoying is because its setting is an auto setting where it has ohms, continuity, and microfarads together and it senses what you're trying to do. And uh, that makes it where it's just not always right, you know. I'm going to set it to that setting and turn on this backlight. You can see that screen. That's good. Okay. So I'm going to go common to Herm. OL. Then 31.22. You see how it just, it took it a minute. 40, then OL, hold it there for a while, 31.22. And that little bit of just annoyingness, I, I don't know, it's just, it got to me. <laughs> it works, you know, uh, common to fan. It has to cycle through before it gets there, 5.2. And if you move them around at all a little bit, 
it just cycles through again. So that's just one thing about them that is not that cool. And a lot of times it'll do it on other things. Continuity works, you know. Uh, but just that little, that one little thing just kind of pissed me off. And it's really just meters, I think, with this auto ranging setting. Uh, so if you're looking at getting a meter that has that, just be mindful of the fact that it will do that to you and it might be aggravating. Uh, but I also wanted to make this uh, just kind of a review of these two, these two meters. Both are good meters. This obvious difference is this field piece has the amp clamp and the amp clamp is a handy thing. You know, you need to see how many amps a compressor is pulling. You know, that's a, a worthwhile thing to have. I just use this fluke most of the time because amps are something that I don't test as much as other stuff. And I'll go get my other fluke that actually came with this, just a regular fluke clamp meter. Uh, and it, it'll test the amps if I need to test amps. This is nice to have. Like if I, if you were a, on a budget, this thing, uh, I don't know, I think you get it for 120 something bucks. And it does all the stuff you need. It does volts, AC and DC, amps, microfarads, continuity ohms. Um, it does temperature. It has the K-type temperature probe so that you can that come with it. It has a non-contact voltage, voltage detector, which is pretty lame on this. I wouldn't use that at all. The best thing about this meter is it has a magnet on the back. You stick it to a unit. Uh, this fluke came with a magnet strap so you can strap it and it hangs but uh honestly i like the magnet on this field piece a lot better um so i bought this when i was first starting out kind of and uh well not really but years a few years ago i bought it and i liked it for a while it got to be aggravating to me so I switched to the fluke. It's still good. I keep it in the house. It's good for just quick checks, stuff in the house if I'm working on something. Uh, and it's, you know, a good backup to have. You always gotta have a backup meter. I've had Klein meters. I've, I've, I've always either had fluke, field piece, or Klein. The Klein ones are cheap and they're not that great. They're, they're not up to the Klein standard in my opinion. But this uh, fluke one, it is just, it's a really, like you can just tell when you're using it that it's just a nicer piece of equipment. Uh, it, like I said, has the magnetic strap. It has this little kickstand, which is nice if you're on the workbench testing something. Um, and it just has all the same basic stuff, ACDC bolts, um, it does, millivolts which i hardly ever i don't think i've ever used that ohms continuity microfarads all their own separate setting which just works a lot better um it's got temperature so uh and then that it's escaping me what that is milli amps or i don't know i don't know what that is. i'm wrong about that i don't know what that is you know it's kind of embarrassing but i don't know uh but this is the fluke 116 it's actually like geared for hvac that's what they sell this meter as uh it's very similar to their electrician's multimeter the fluke 117 there's a few things that it doesn't have that that one has it also has auto volts which It'll tell, it could, it'll automatically tell whether it's AC or DC. I'm not really crazy about that. I don't, I'd rather just know and set it to whatever one it is. Uh, it has way better leads than the field piece. These leads are the best. You can twist it and it'll cover up all but that point in case you have to stick it in somewhere where you don't want it to arc on something. Uh, and the best thing about the leads is the accessories. 
that you can buy for it. Where, like you, I have these alligator clamps and these little threads here, you can screw on all kinds of different, they sell a bunch of different accessories, but this uh, way that you can screw these on is just so handy to put on a common or a ground and then have your other hand free to test other stuff. Uh, so this is a nicer, nicer setup. Fluke 116, it's great. Um, so I just wanted to compare these two meters. They're both good. The Fluke though is just way more enjoyable to use. I feel like I can trust it better. It just, it's just, I've just had a lot better luck with it. So if you're in the market for a multimeter, especially for working on air conditioners, heating and air work, uh, get you the fluke. That's my opinion. Uh, thanks for watching.